Hello again, everybody. It's Jan Monahan for Wrapping with Jan. This is a video about the Hero Arts Monthly Kit, August 2019. And this is all about uh, medieval times and brave knights and fair maidens and all that kind of good stuff that never existed but we like to think about. Here's just a, a quick review over what we had. There's kings and queens and unicorns and all kinds of good things. And there were lots of goodies in this. So we're going to use some of them here. Uh, in my stash, I have some gold mirror uh, cardstock and I affixed it to a card and right there is the gold paint that came in with the kit if you don't have any uh, gold cardstock that will work we're gonna need some uh, Gina K connect glue and the trusty double-sided tape And these are what Hero Arts is calling uh, dragon scales. I wasn't quite sure uh, what they were in the beginning. They weren't sequins and they weren't anything that I'd ever seen before. But we're going to work with them this time. Uh, we're also going to need a stitched banner. And there it is. And some vellum. And the stitched banner always comes in handy. This is by uh, Simon Says Stamp. So let's get started. I color and uh, die cut uh, Merlin. And then the, uh, this beautiful cardstock that comes with, with the kit. I used all that and I wish I hadn't, but I cut this piece of uh, purple mirrored cardstock just slightly uh, smaller than the gold. And I put, uh, double-sided tape on it and now I know it's going to stick. I was afraid to use any glue on something this big. The best thing is double-sided tape because you know it's going to stay. All right, now we've put that on and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this banner die. Now this is 40 pound vellum. Um, it's not uh, totally see-through but I wanted to break break it up. I was afraid that uh, nobody would be able to see Merlin if I put him right on the uh, on the purple cardstock. I'm going to stamp a sentiment from the kit with uh, Simon Says Stamp Intense Black. Um, this shows up just about on every surface. Um, I'm going to use the um, Have a Magical Day and um, I'll probably give this as a, a birthday card. This will be a, this won't be your run-of-the-mill birthday card. Anyway, normally I would um, emboss this, and it, but not today. Embossing on vellum is kind of tricky, and I didn't feel like messing with it today. So I pressed down very firmly because I was too lazy to get out my misty. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to put uh, Merlin on this. Well, Merlin or the wizard or what have you. And I wanted to put I I wanted to put something on the card that would kind of break up the movement of the purple card stock. That it's there's a lot going on back there. And so I chose vellum, and I'm, I've tried every adhesive known to mankind to work with vellum. I've tried liquid adhesive, that was a disaster. Um, even uh, dry adhesive, like uh, double-sided tape, you can still see it. So the only way that I have found that looks decent is to hide whatever adhesive you're using. and. Um, hide it behind images, hide it behind verbiage, <clears throat> hide it behind anything so you don't see it. And this isn't, uh, it's, it's not even to the trained eye that you can see it. If, if you don't know what you're looking at, you can see it. 
So we'll put Merlin here. And I can't find my scissors right now. So I'm not going to be able to cut off the excess there. But okay, now Merlin's on. Now it's time to put the wizard into action. I'm using the um, embellishments from the kit. I believe they called them the, the dragon dragon scales. Well, I'm not going to use them for dragon scales. I'm going to use them for wizard dust or um, I don't know what else you would call it. It's just stick with wizard, wizard dust. And uh, I've never worked with this shape. I've worked with the round sequins and I've worked with, uh, you know, clear bubbles, things like that. But I've never worked with, um, they almost have a diamond shape to it. And you've got to be careful here. What we don't want to do is smear a bunch of glue on the cardstock and then you know they they say that it dries clear well you can still see it so what i'm going to do here after i repair merlin there is i'm just going to make very small spots where the dragon scales will go once again i'm using the gina k connect connect glue sorry and I don't want to go too far with this but I want to make sure that the recipient of the card knows that there's magic going on in his or her day now I've put too big a glob too close to Merlin here and I did, this may work and this may not I usually use the head of a pin or a needle to try and take some of it off and I I'm hoping this will work and this is the time ladies and gentlemen where the jewel picker works we've got the big end for the big business and we've got the little end for the little business and it's the little business that we've got to worry about today and it doesn't really matter where you start you start at the top or the bottom but just so long as you get them on. And I'm going to speed this way up while, uh, while you watch me put this on. This Marvy Jewel Picker is one of my very favorite tools if you've got arthritis or if you've just got chubby fingers like I do. It, it picks up gems. It picks up picks up uh, the uh, rhinestones, it picks up sequins, it picks up anything. And if, if the stickiness goes out, then all you need to do is wipe it off with a baby wipe and you are back in business. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I usually make some kind of elaborate card. Or, sorry, not a card, uh, an elaborate envelope to match my cards and this time I don't think it's going to be very elaborate because I don't dare put these um, dragon scales or sequins or whatever they're calling them on there that wouldn't make it through the processors okay I'm gonna go ahead and finish this card up right now so this is uh, project number one and we're gonna head right on to project number two all right, on to project number two. Since this stamp set is kind of a, uh, it takes place in a, a magical time, I have decided to put this little kingdom in the clouds. And for this, I used a stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and it's called Clouds for Days. And this is probably the most versatile cloud stamp that you can get. You can make the edge of clouds or you can make an entire cloud. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But right now, I'm going to use the purple cardstock again that's got a lot going on. This will be our sky behind the clouds and behind the castle. I'm going to get this put on. Oh, there's my hat. I'm sorry, I forgot to take it off. And I'm going to stick this on here. And then I'm going to use the, the castle die, which is spectacular. I'll be using this a lot. Um, I'm going to use that as the castle 
and once again I'm using Gina K Connect. We won't need a whole lot of adhesive for this because we've there are windows and uh, I'm just afraid that a whole lot of it will end up squeezing out where we don't want it and once I put this on the card I'll make the clouds and the clouds will I'll put plenty of adhesive on the clouds and the castle will stay the gold cardstock that I'm using here is from my stash um, I got it from Michaels I'm sure there's um, plenty of other craft stores that carry it I'm putting some release paper on top of that in case some of the glue uh, seeps out and I'll put my stamping block on there to make sure that nothing moves now it's time for the clouds this cloud stencil as I said before is probably the most versatile um, it's got four different sides of clouds plus it has three individual clouds and the ink I'm using is the distress oxide wilted violet this particular ink uh, goes wonderfully with the uh, purple cardstock that came in the kit and I'm using my blending brush and as you can tell this is this is probably the easiest way to make clouds and they they are perfect I haven't tried to make uh, storm clouds out of this I prefer to make um, oh happy little clouds like Bob Ross would say and you can turn the one of four sides and get um, bigger clouds or smaller clouds it's all up to you my favorite thing about these distress inks is you can use them on stencils and it comes right off doesn't matter how long it's been on there it'll come right off now here's the individual clouds and I didn't know how these were going to turn out I've um, I'm making purple clouds again and as you can see they're nice and nice and fluffy and I'm going to go ahead and cut them out and ta-da there we are while I was doing all this my card was drying and now it's time to put uh, my little kingdom here in the clouds I spent a lot of time trying to get these clouds so that I could see the most of the castle um, it's a gorgeous castle like I said before and I didn't want to cover anything up so there are the clouds and I'm gonna trim things off and now it's time for all all the characters since this is supposed to be a peaceful place and a peaceful scene I'm not gonna put any dragons or uh, wizards or anything like that and I just want to make sure that they're they're placed correctly and nobody's crowding anybody else okay I finally got these characters placed where I wanted them and that extra cloud that I made I went ahead and put the happy day of your birth so this is a birthday card I thought the card would be a little bit more three-dimensional than it was so when I cut out the cloud and stamped it with the uh, happy day of your birth I decided it was time to put some dimensional tape on it both of these cards could go to a male or a female I don't think a, a man would be particularly insulted if he got either one of these with the Merlin or the uh, the brave knight but that's the end for card number two and I'm going to speed up how I did the envelope um, you already saw me do the clouds and it's going to be something similar so once again I'm going to be using the uh, clouds for days stencil and I'm still using the wilted violet and ta-da we have a matching envelope for our card there we go okay now we are on to project number three this is a rather involved project I don't want to lose any of you uh, so I've tried to make this as compact as I can I'm starting out with the remainder of my purple card stock 
and this is going to be a birthday card. I'm using a relatively new stamp set from Gina K Designs and it's the uh, Gina K Cake Toppers and I've got the number here from you and or for you and I got this from Simon. Um, it's but I've used the uh, dies. There are two dies. Uh, one has the triple tier cake and the other one has just an addition. And of course then there's the uh, uh, the cake stand. So we'll put those aside for now. I'll be using several images from the stamp set. I'm going to use the dragon and uh, the fair maiden and I think that there's the knight in shining armor and the unicorn and I can't remember what else I've put on there. I don't have any gold ink that I really like and I looked at the um, paint that came in the kit and there's this glitter gold and I thought that I might try that and believe it or not I'm going to try it in my Misty. But let's try and get my uh, my gift bag put together here. Um, like I said we are doing a gift bag and I need to apologize to everybody because I couldn't get the entire gift bag in camera range. Um, we can get almost to the top but not quite so uh, towards the end of this video I'll, I'll show you uh, the whole the whole project. I always use a very strong double-sided tape for my gift bags because of all the creases and the hills and the valleys. Uh, a gift bag is not the time that you want to use a what I would call a wimpy liquid glue. So we've got the the card base or the bag base on the bag and we're going to put that aside and now comes the part that I wasn't real sure about. There are three little rubber stamps and they are the dividers for the cake. I can't, I, I'm sure that the uh, cake people have a have a name for them but I can't I can't think of it right now. Um, they're like I said they are the dividers and instead of inking them up I am going to paint them up and uh, we'll see how that happens. I'm using my regular cardstock for this part of the project. It's uh, 80 pound Nina solar white cardstock and uh, we're going to be painting these rubber stamps. Now I've never seen anyone, I, I've seen watercolor put on rubber stamps but I've never seen this uh, kind of acrylic stuff. I don't know whether it's fast drying or whether it's going to whether it's going to work. I'll just be using a regular paint brush for this and I haven't watered down the paint at all and I'm just going to apply it to the rubber stamps. I don't know whether it's going to stain or whether it'll dry too quickly. Um, as I've said before let me make the mistakes so you don't have to. I'm going to very be very careful here and put it on lightly and gingerly because I don't want to get any of this paint on the misty door. And I'm not sure how much paint to put on these. I guess we'll find out. As I paint this last one, um, I'm going to caution myself and if you folks try this, uh, don't slam the misty door on the cardstock because you might get some, you might get a lot of paint splatter. Uh, it's akin to a little kid jumping in a puddle of, you know, after a rain. Uh, it goes everywhere. So okay everybody hold your breath and let's see what happens. I'm going to give this a, a good pressing with my hands and Let's see what happens. Well, that's not too bad. I think I have to put a little bit more on the on the top one there and maybe a little bit on the second one. 
unfortunately, these particular stamps did not come with a matching die. So I'm going to have to take the time to fussy cut these and get them ready. So I'm going to say that this is a success. The one thing I will do is take soap and water to my rubber stamps because I don't know if this is going to affect them. Um, you know, if anybody else wants to do this, I would love to find out if you had any success or you won't do it again or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to put those, uh, those tears aside and now I'm going to put, I guess, the icing on the cake. Sorry for that little interruption. My husband came in and told me that there is a severe thunderstorm on the way. And during thunderstorms, we lose power frequently, and that means I lose part of my visual project here, and I don't want that to happen. Um, for the icing on the cake, I'm going to be using the same kind of uh, wilted violet ink so that it will match the background paper. Um, and once again, I'm going to speed this up so A, you don't get bored, and, and B, um, I don't uh, lose power, and then you lose part of my YouTube project here. So sit back and enjoy, and I'll be back when this little segment is finished. I did forget to paint the, uh, the cake tower, cake holder, whatever this, cake, whatever it's called. And um, I didn't have to use the Misty this time, so that was, that was a good thing. All right, now it's time to uh, use my glue, the Gina K Connect, and I'm going to very quickly Put this on the bag and there's the cake stand and now all my tears or cake tears go on and now for all the critters. I wanted this cake to be kind of like a mountain and we have the dragon starting at the bottom and with each tier he has to fight a new adversary and if he makes it to the top he's got the court jester. And I don't know what the court jester is supposed to do but <clears throat> anyway first it's the unicorn and then it's the knight in shining armor and everybody else and so I'm going to put my my block on there and no bag is complete without uh, ribbons and a gift tag. I went ahead and used the uh, you rule image and the queen from the kit and I'm going to tie it on to one of the handles. Uh, I have probably 50 different colors of raffia and ribbon and things like that and I looked for my purple and my purple wasn't there and if memory serves I used this for I used the purple raffia for somebody's Halloween costume last year well gold and white ribbon will have to do I always tie it around one of the bag handles so I can put something in the bag and I use raffia because if if I when I first started making these gift bags if I use wired ribbon it tended to be too heavy 
and the bag wouldn't stand up if it had something light in it. So let's take take a look at this and uh, see if I can get the whole thing in there. Well, almost. But uh, there is the birthday bag for a, probably a woman. I don't think I would give this to a man. But um, yeah, I like this. So give me your comments. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.